following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Good evening and you're joining us on another episode on Gen XYZ and as you all know this is a platform where we talk about youth related uh, topics or issues. Now, Today we are joining you on a very special day, it's International Women's Day and we are here. I'm joined with three strong women who has been, you know, trying to make a difference in this world and trying to empower women. Now, International Women's Day has been celebrated throughout the years and I'm here to talk about, you know, what it exactly means right now in the current context. Now, to share their ideas with me, I would like you to be introduced to Tarangi Mutukumarana, who is the director of Yehelia Foundation, and Thimetma Algama, who is the secretary of the New Generation chapter, and also Sayumi Jayawardana, who is the Global Outreach Avenue chair at the New Generation chapter Sri Lanka. Thank you, girls, for joining me on the show today. And before we start, I'm wishing you all a very happy Women's Day. Thank happy you, Women's Day. Day to you too. Okay, now tell me, now since you uh, three are in the forefront of this chapter, you know, empowering women and the youth per se, uh, what does Women's Day actually mean right now? I know that it has been celebrated throughout the years, but is it the same right now in the modern times? What do you think? So I think Women's Day to me is a celebration of all women um, being very inclusive of the different types of women um, and I think while we're celebrating all our achievements, all our accomplishments throughout the years, it's also to signify um, the hardships that we have, how much we have to still conquer and how much we still have to get through. Uh, so while shedding light on achievements and accomplishments, we're also looking at hardships. We're also giving that space uh, for fundraising, for necessities for women. We're giving that space to empower women. We're giving that space to speak about the violence that women are facing so that uh, some people who may not be so aware about the issues that women are facing on a daily basis are made more aware of it. So I think while it has been celebrated for a very long time, it's been celebrated throughout the years, uh, the theme for me has always been equality with a lot of equity necessary. Uh, but also while this year's theme is on a digital space, it's on um, embracing equity, it shows how much innovation is necessary. The theme may be different from year to year, but I think um, the base of of what uh, International Women's Day is and why we're celebrating it is similar from year to year. Um, that's my opinion of it. I'm just uh, thinking now, since this has been celebrated throughout the past years and people have been actually taking it seriously, but does it mean the same right now? Do people, you know, take Women's Day very seriously right now? Well, I mean, I hope so. <laughs> I hope they take Women's Day very seriously. But I think um, that there are some ways that people are celebrating that may not be the exact right way that people would like to see Women's Day celebrated. That is not to say that there is only one way to celebrate, right? We have rallies, we have panel discussions, we have different activities that are happening and we encourage uh, all those types of activities because Women's Day is not about one human being, it's not about one society, it's not about one NGO or one government, it's all of us, right? But sometimes there are ways that we may see, even on the media sometimes, right, where um, there would be some company that would give discounted um, goods, kitchen wear to women on Women's Day, with it, which is really honestly, you're not understanding the idea, right? Or you have some post that is put by a corporate with a woman's face on it with some random quote. You haven't asked them for their consent. You haven't asked them if it's okay that that is exhibited, right? Or you get women to work for Women's Day on some kind of event or a panel discussion, but you're not remunerating them. You're just getting more work from them for the same pay that you're paying, right? So various ways that I have seen that Women's Day has been celebrated, which 
shouldn't be the case. But having said that, I know that there are lots of ways to celebrate, but it would be great if we could just be more inclusive. We could really look at what we're celebrating and celebrate it the way that it should be. I know that I would completely agree with you on that. Now, Women's Day has completely become another commercialized day, you know, just like Valentine's okay. Day, where you expect a lot of discounts from hotels or restaurants or retail stores or anything. And even corporates, as you said, they are celebrating women just by putting a picture of them and appreciating them. Why should it just be on Women's Day, right? Why can't they be appreciated every day or at least once a month even appreciate that the, the work that they do? Because I believe a lot of women, especially the moms they give in so much just to come to work just for one day so uh, Timetma and Saimi what does Women's Day mean to y'all? So uh, Women's Day I think we shouldn't celebrate women just on one day exactly and Agreed. you have to be celebrated all day because you know if I take a live example grandmoms right they don't get paid to work they just support the daughters and the grandchildren and at the end of the day, I think we don't celebrate them, but you know, we also make them work and they do a lot of housework, but still they don't get paid or appreciated. So I think that is one of the things that we have to highlight as well. I mean, people, corporates, like maybe you and me, all of us, we do work, but you know, it's just one day verified for you to get celebrated and we shouldn't do that. You can go yeah, save me. so um, I completely agree with both of them. Like they said, we shouldn't be celebrated just on one specific day. And the whole purpose of Women's Day, like the whole concept of Women's Day started to recognize the women who were often unrecognized or underappreciated. So I believe um, that should be that should be done on a daily basis you shouldn't just appreciate it can be your friend it can be your mother just on this specific day and i mean getting her a gift on on women's day would be okay but you know it's kind of too commercialized uh, uh, with the current trends with social media coming in it it shouldn't be limited to just one day the respect that you give all women uh, the recognition, the contribution that they make should be sort of appreciated throughout the year, just not on one day. That's my opinion. So this year, tell me now, from the new generation chapter in Sri Lanka, have you organized any programs or anything to celebrate Women's Day? What are you all up to? So um, not, not specifically on Women's Day, but we appreciate and we recognize young uh, women throughout the whole year and we have this uh, special award ceremony called the New Generation Awards where we uh, recognized both women and men uh, on their achievements so I think that's one big thing we do for the youth of this country and uh, we really appreciate what they do what 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 they do to the community and the society of Sri Lanka and the fact that they are you know still holding on and still having faith uh, about Sri Lanka, even with the current context, you know, current situation of the country, I think that uh, speaks volumes. So, yeah. what sort of achievements are you rewarding for? Um, so, it varies from, you know, t tourism to uh, modeling to, yeah. to fashion photography designing, to photography, fashion designing, cooking, to cooking all, all to across all industries, yeah, not limiting across. to just the education uh, sector, which most of us tend to do. Uh, we go across. We um, appreciate uh, young people yeah. across and all not industries. Also from Colombo, but also from the district areas. Mm -hmm. So all wide Sri Lanka, and anyone who's willing to participate, they can always reach back to us. And um, so, you know, there are people who don't have technology to, you know, apply or send us applications but that we've made a platform so that they can also come in and give their, I mean, show their talents. 
Oh, to the that's youth. amazing. Yeah. So, uh, Tarangi, what is uh, Yehili Foundation? Now, you being the director, what have you all been organizing so far? So, Yehilia is a space that works a lot in the legal awareness section. We work in legal research uh, and policy advocacy. And because we're majority lawyers and law students, we really try to reform some of the laws, which I'm sure lots of people would agree is very archaic, it's very old, uh, and sometimes it's very discriminatory towards women. So, attempting to reform laws uh, is one thing that uh, Yehilia is has been doing for a long time and we will continue to do. Other than that, obviously to reform something you need to first do the research, the background work necessary to see what needs to change, what needs to be reformed. So we work in that area as well. We try to do a lot of legal awareness uh, because we believe that that is very, very essential because there are lots of women and girls who don't know their rights, they don't know their laws, they don't know what authority to go to if they have been violated, their rights have been violated, um, they have been harassed or assaulted. So we try to do as much awareness as we can. Uh, it could be workplace harassment, sexual harassment, domestic violence, anything, any form of gender-based violence. Um, so having done all of that for quite a few years now, we want to continue to do that in maybe bigger forums uh, with more and more women. Uh, for International Women's Day, because of the theme of digital all, and we are looking at that innovation technology side, we are really looking into the area of cyber law and the offenses that are happening there because it's very, very, very rampant. We have people calling Yehelia, we have people calling us as lawyers who um, their nude pictures have been leaked or videos, their intimate partners have put out these um, videos and they are in so much fear. They, they, they are, they're sometimes contemplating to take away their life, they're contemplating to hurt themselves, they don't know what to do and this has become such a big issue with technology on the rise, with everybody having a smartphone it's so easy to commit these offences. So for International Women's Day this year, we are looking at that area, what we can do in that area. Uh, you will see the work that we are putting out um, in the future in collaboration with another big organisation. And we want people to understand that this is wrong. We want the men and the boys to understand that this is wrong. Please think 100 times before you do this to you know any woman or any girl so we want them to think that on the other hand we want a girl to really think before they send these pictures out because as you know when something is online it's always That's going to right. be there and it's so difficult to bring it back down right so thinking from both sides the perspective of men and women that's how we want to approach the theme this year so we y'all will hopefully see the work that Yehelia is putting out and uh, we're excited we're excited to get that information that awareness across because we we understand that people are more likely to watch very small snippet videos and then get that idea into their head so we're really hoping for the best and through that awareness that we can reduce the amount of um, offenses that are happening on the cyber stream. All right. Uh, Tarangi, you mentioned something about, you know, y'all are reforming some laws in the corporates also yes. that exploit women. What sort of laws are you working on currently? Yes. So right now we're working when it comes to laws on a variety of laws. So it's not only related to the workplace harassment. It's we're looking at abortion. We're looking at rape. We're looking at sexual harassment. We're looking at the lack of cyber laws because we don't have specific laws, right? You have laws from the penal code but not a specific offence of um, maybe stalking or a specific offence of distribution of intimate images. So we're looking to include some of the laws, we're looking to repeal and amend some of the existing laws um, and hopefully with some luck. I mean we've spoken to the Women's Caucus of the Parliament, we've been to the Parliament, we've spoken to the Legislature, we've done a lot that we think we can do. We've spoken to the Bar Association so that hopefully through them we can get the laws reformed. I don't know why it's not changing. I, I really don't know. Other than a lack of interest maybe by the parliamentarians, maybe they don't prioritize issues of women. Maybe it's a lack of women leadership because we have, what, five, six, very few uh, female representatives in the parliament. I don't know what the issue is, but ho we're hoping for change. And I think lots of um, lots of organizations like ours are advocating for that change, and that's great. But I think that there is a level that civil society organizations can do. And then after that, it's really up to the legislature. So fingers crossed, vote wisely, and we can hopefully see some change. Yeah, well, I we hope so too. It's, it's sad to say that, you know, people are not taking this 
seriously and it's sad to say that you know people think that oh this is normal this happens on a daily basis you know women get har uh, may, may harassed on a daily basis and they don't get respected uh, it, it's the normal culture here in Sri Lanka Asian nations we should expect that and women are the only people who should know to you know deal with it why should women deal with it when you know the source of what causes everything needs to be changed in the first place, right? So, Tarangi, I really hope that these laws would make the change here in this country and people do actually take this seriously. So, what do you all think now in the current context? It's true that women are, you know, being taken lightly these days, even through the slightest disrespect, like people think. So, what? Just deal with it, right? So, you all being in the work field, have you all also gone through similar instances where that you all felt disrespected in some way? Well, thankfully, I haven't uh, gone across any anything like that. But you know, with us, I think we have got into this culture of normalizing you know what women go through you know it, it's okay she can bear it up kind of thing so i think we shouldn't normalize these uh uh, uh harassments or violences that women go through just because she has the ability to bear it all up and and um i think we shouldn't normalize and this culture of normalizing these things shouldn't uh, be a thing. And you know, the advocacy is there. Like, like Tarangi just said, um, all of us, uh, all these organizations are advocating towards women and their rights and you know, what's going wrong in the society. But where's the action that's being taken, right? Are we really taking that action? And the implementation is where we are lacking. Uh, we have the rules, we have the reforms coming in, but the implementation, like Sarangi said, is what we don't have. So that's what we should be working on. And um, yeah, like, like she said, I really hope something changes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I hope that the women also stand up for themselves because most of them are like, yeah, I go, go through this on a daily basis. I'm used to it now. The word used to, it's not something. You shouldn't get used exactly. to it. Exactly. Yeah. That's not they something you need to get by used themselves. To. So we should stop, you know. You I just feel that, they, you know, the women also are not confident enough to speak up because they feel like it's no use. Nobody's taking action against it, right? So like, this conversation is becoming interesting. But before that, we have to go into a short commercial break. You're gen watching Gen XYZ. We'll be back soon. And also, I forgot to mention that we are at uh, Cafe IV in Watala, and it's a beautiful location. Would like to appreciate that as well. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we are in the second segment and gathered here with me are a group of women who wish to make a change in this world, especially amongst women and the youth as well. Uh, we are in discussion with Sayumi Jayawardhana, Timetma Algama and also Tarangi Mutukumara. Okay, now continuing our discussion, I think before the break we left off by saying, you know, women are also normalizing the fact that they are being harassed or they are being disrespected. They feel that it's something that they need to be uh, get get used to it you know and um, what can you all say about that is it something that needs to change or is it something that the world needs to change that like i feel that if the women don't change their ideal mindset how are we going to change the others you know so what are your thoughts on that i think uh, this should start from school i think school plays a major role in a lot of that's going on a lot of the problems that's going on in the world today uh, it should start from a younger child where you have to say this is not okay if if this is happening to you this is not okay people can't disrespect you like this and you shouldn't normalize these things if this is happening to you you should complain you should talk about it and you should um, you know get help from others so that empowerment should start within school and then I think it will move uh, while they move up the ladder I think it will gradually come up. Uh, yeah, that's what I think. And also I think uh, in school, mainly boys need some kind of uh, respect. You know, we have to always teach them how to respect your, even if they have mothers, even if they have sisters. 
some boys don't know how to respect women it's not being biased but i think generally it's more um, you know a more volume comes to a lady than a man right so so we have to stand up for ourselves and uh, you know we have to talk to them saying that we deserve to be treated like this and it's not always forcing them to treat us but also making some kind of movement or maybe some kind of a uh, conversation to treat us right but you know we can't we can't fight saying women's right this is this you can't do that so it's always maybe comes within a family backgrounds or from you know school from the places you been to and you know there is this uh, norm wherever you know if a guy has like a mother and a sister they treat you right and the rest of the guys they don't treat you right that's not correct and i think from that that is the scratch we need to start as well we need to not be like you know women is women and men is men that we have to stop and being like you know we have to all empower each other and first we i think the men have to start empowering each other than you know expecting men to treat us yeah that is definitely an important point where women need to empower other women and uh, what uh, sanumi um, saimi i'm sorry also mentioned that you know it should start from schools but in order to start from schools i feel like the seniors need to build their mindset in order to teach this to their children so tarangi what do you think about you know the awareness or the the knowledge that the seniors have on this topic you know respecting women and what so yeah so i think it really starts maybe even before school where now if your mother uh, would teach you at a very young age look darling if somebody touches you here that's wrong They, these are like no touch places no touch zones right your intimate areas and i think that knowledge comes and should come to a girl child from anyone like their mother their father their adults when they are very young that's how you then you're able to at least know when somebody is harassing you you're able to recognize violence that's perpetrated against you right then from that age of course you go to schools right just like saimi very correctly said and we have no comprehensive sexual education in schools for some reason there are so many people who are against this much needed education so you don't learn simple things like consent you don't learn how to protect yourself from violence things that we should have been taught in schools right then you go to your work place and somehow some people say don't complain it's your boss it's okay that they've harassed you don't think about your job think about the money that you need so in your workplace also you're like okay i'll just deal with it right then you get married maybe or you're in a intimate relationship where your partner is inflicting violence against you and maybe you have been brought up in a family where your father was abusing your mother and your mother thought that is normal and normalized it like we've spoken about and the girl child also has grown up seeing this so they think this is either the way that love is perpetuated against you or this is okay or as a woman you must take this hitting and hammering and that's okay so then even in your own relationship having witnessed what your parents have gone through you think it's okay and you let your like husband or partner whoever it is be you up and think that that's okay right we have so many women in this country and globally who think it's okay that my man hits me they hit me because of love they hit me to punish me maybe i deserved it and that's okay right and just like we were speaking about if your mother is not empowering you as her daughter you're not empowering your friend you're not empowering your sister then that's where we're going to have an issue because fighting the patriarchy is very 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 difficult as it is but if we are not empowering ourselves and if we are not assisting to empower another woman then that becomes problematic and i think the role that education plays the role that media plays uh, has a big they have big roles to play right and presently i don't think that they are playing their respective roles very well even if you take the media for instance you have the usual father is reading the newspaper the mother is cooking the sister is cleaning the brother is playing cricket if you take our school books i hope it's changed now but when if you take our textbooks that's the basis that you see you don't see a father cooking i mean have you ever seen a book where there is a father cooking right so this is an issue that we've had forever now where there are these 
gender stereotypical responsibilities that are given to a man and a woman. Therefore, you have this privilege, then you have this power, you have this entitlement that comes from one side, and then the other side feels unempowered, right? We spoke about how much unpaid care work is being done in homes, right? And nobody, there are no statistics on that, right? There are no statistics on like how women should, um, f women's unpaid care work is even statistically looked at, right? So I think that's an issue, right? We are not empowering women. We are not feeling empowered ourselves. And even if you take someone who's being violated, and maybe we'll get to this in our next episode, is that we don't know where to go or what to do, right? So I think that's also problematic. And then that empowerment, I think, is necessary. So hopefully things will change. I think it's changed from generation to generation. I think we are more empowered than our mothers were. Our mothers are more empowered than their mothers were. But I think still a lot more has to change. So fingers crossed it does. Why do you think that women are normalizing this in the first place? Because as you said, this is not something that women should be okay with. So why do you think it's happening? We've been told that way, right? Yeah, from, we've been from taught. generation to generation. I mean, it's something taught. cultural. Because, you know, it's, it's it, it actually comes from the culture, you know, because now if we go to another country and if you see the difference there and us, we are totally different, we are scared of men, we don't stand up, we don't hit them, but you know, <laughs> even if they harass us, we don't get back on them, right? But you know, those countries, they talk to themselves, you know, you can't touch me like that, uh, that's totally, and also a police officer would harass them right at that time in another country. But for us, they'll just keep watching, right? I mean, I don't know. It, or blame it the victim in that yeah. case, mostly. I think because that's are, totally true, right? That's so much victim blaming that happens. And yeah. because we, women are being blamed or girls are being blamed for even complaining about the violence that is perpetrated against them, nobody wants to go. How many people do you know who are harassed? How many people out of those people have actually made complaints? Yeah. How many people want to go to the police? Worse, take it to the court, go through an entire of journey of the court system, an entire journey with the police who yeah. unfortunately are not gender sensitized at all. I mean, you, that thing doesn't go I mean the complaint doesn't go out beyond beyond yeah. the you know the boundary it's to just, the point where people have to take action yeah it's, it's you just on a book where you, there's so many women getting harassed just on a book it doesn't go beyond it it's true that you know women should be supporting other women on this because none of us are actually taking this seriously and it's important that you know women are supporting each other but the thing is I don't see that either I don't know with my experience and with the stories that I've heard from people as well especially in a workplace in the hierarchy some people like most of the people hate working under a lady boss yes. I, I don't know why people say that but the main reason is the lady boss does not allow the other women to climb up the hierarchical ladder but why so why should we compete against other women where else we should be lifting each other up you know in this man the so-called man driven world you know why can't we just support another women to strive and go forward in life so what action plans do you all have uh, taken have you all taken in order to you know find out more incidents that has happened like this and the action that we can take and what workplaces can do to empower women and also spread the word of you know supporting each other what can we do about that um, so yeah uh, thankfully I've, I've ha uh, had been I still have friends and friend circles I mean friend circles who really support me and and that's really important to um, even to make a complaint or to come out and to improve yourself in all kinds of ways right so um, so that in workplace I think the corporates nowadays are trying their level best I could say to kind of empower their um, female population in their companies and they are taking action towards it you know to make more space for women and to break the barriers in their workspaces. Um, so, yeah, do you all want to add anything? Uh, and also, I think uh, there are so many organizations. So, if we talk about Dr. Solochana Sigera, she is doing an organization for women empowerment that she does in major scales from every district, from every division, from every, and also country wise. So, I think she's playing a major role 
for women in management and also as new generation chapter we are being taught to always empower women and even men not you know maybe equalize it and then empower each other that's right yeah so i think that's really important because i think we see um, a lot of women in universities for instance right the majority of if you take students men to women are there are more girls but that doesn't transpire in the workplace right we have lesser men lesser women going into the workspace than they than there are men even if you take as a lawyer in the bar association the men to women proportions there is an issue although we have way more women in law faculty and way more women in law college right but say okay you make it to the bar you come through all that hardships you work as a counsel then the when you go up the ladder you see lesser and lesser and lesser women up the ladder right and you might wonder why is that because women are not being empowered from their homes is it because well, you have to get married is it because you have bad children is it because you have to go on maternity leave and all these issues together the fact that more women are being educated and honestly more educated in this country doesn't transpire in the workplace right and that can be because maybe you have a mean boss who doesn't want to empower you or that could mean that your family thinks maybe work is not for you how can you go out in the night stay out in like office till late things like that right so i think families need to empower their daughters brothers need to empower their sisters we need to empower each other workplaces our seniors our bosses they need to empower us they need to make an environment that is conducive so that women can continue to work amidst the hardships they can find a way right and you also need to assist the women to find a way and i think if we have that because if women are empowered if women are in employment women's poverty is reduced and then if you are being valued in your household you can actually leave right the biggest problem we have and a lot of clients who come to us they don't have the money to leave they're like my husband is beating me up really every day dependent. but yeah. how do i leave where do i go who's going to feed my children right because this is the husband who's taken away your job told you not to work told you to stay at home take care of your children and now you can't even leave even though he's beating you to death so that i think is a biggest issue of a lack of empowerment that we have in this country and but some, on the right yeah. uh, side there are also things like paternal leave coming yeah. in and that's i think a great initiative towards you know empowering women the family unit all that something um, which i've also noticed is like now this competition and jealousy is at a tremendous peak you know amongst women itself why can't we compete with the men most of the like women which i've come across they be, they just give up straight away sometimes you know oh i'm competing against a boy or a guy a, a man so i don't think i have a chance why not why can't we change that attitude amongst women you know why should we always be competing with women only it's not that yeah physical uh, attributes wise of course women are weaker than men i would uh, agree on that but mentality wise emotion wise the capability of absorbing anything and you know the uh, mentality uh, the capacity of our brains i think that we can compete with men so what advice can you all give to the women out there in this competitive world okay my advice is empowering another person doesn't mean you're losing anything exactly. right in fact it's it Uh, adding value to yourself so i think we should go above and beyond our boundaries that's my principle at least to help another person it doesn't have to be a uh, women specifically it can be a, a man but um i think we should empower each other uh, that way and we shouldn't ever think that we lose anything just by empowering another human being and um yeah so that is my opinion about that so in my point of view i think we are all as human we are bound emotionally right but it's just the fact that we don't want to you know lower our uh, standards saying that we are empowering a woman or a lady or a girl it's just we need that emotional touch and the emotional bond but you know we be like men doesn't want that men are strong they but it's still there and it's it's you know that that i think empowering comes within ourselves and also re, also it's something emotionally it's a emotional attachment and uh, maybe we have to first empower ourselves and then we have to talk about empowering other women like you know the close people we should em- empower and also tell men that you know you sh- i mean men sometimes be like uh you all are not empowering women 
so why should we do that right that's what they say so we have to maybe take it off from our heads first exactly in order to like ask other people to do it we as women need to start it within ourselves but we have to go into a short commercial break we'll be back soon you're watching gen xyz Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we are here at Cafe Ivy in Watthala and we've been in the discussion of the topic on women empowerment and uh, we have been uh, discussing with Tarangi Muthukumarana, uh, Timetma Algama and Sayumi Jayavardhana. Now in the first two segments we spoke about, we left off by talking about empowering other women, right? Now since we are in the last segment, I want to focus on, you know, gender-based violence and also the avenues that are available for women to come out and speak their heart's content because I feel that no matter how much women try to speak out their problems, people don't take it seriously. People might, you know, just put a post on social media or talk to a friend or something, but how far does that go, you know? People need some content on or proof that, you know, their words are taken into account and that uh, action has been taken according to it. So tell me according to your experience, how many women have come forward expressing their feelings and expressing their problems to y'all and what are the actions that y'all have, uh, immediate action that y'all have taken then and there? Sure, um, so I think lots of women now are increasingly meeting lawyers, they are increasingly making complaints, which is great, but I know and understand that that's still a very small percentage of the number of people who are actually being violated. So while we acknowledge that there is an increase, we also need to acknowledge that there are so many more women and girls who are not coming forward. And I think we already spoke about things like victim blaming uh, that happens by even your own family sometimes, right? And you have so many people who say, don't complain against your husband because, you know, Paula Caddy, right? Or like, don't do that to your children. How will your children grow up without their father you have own parents I've had clients whose parents have told them don't go and complain to the police what will other people think what will society think of us right so when you have all these barriers I understand that it's very very difficult for a woman or girl to come and complain having said that I truly believe that a child growing up in a situation of violence where violence is perpetrated every day in their household they're not going to have a good life lots of people will tell you stay for your children don't break up the family for your children but children don't want to see that and no child growing up that way is going to grow up with a good life they're not going to move on in life with a positive life attitude and like I said earlier they're going to see this violence perpetrated and think that that's normal right so I think and I always will encourage women and girls to please and men and boys alike because harassment and violence is not something that only happens to women and girls right to complain having said that as a lawyer working in this field Personally, I have very low confidence in the Sri Lankan police. Um, we have had many women who we ourselves have taken to the police station and you would think situation may be better when there is a lawyer. It is better and I do encourage anyone who has the capacity to afford a lawyer and there are many organizations, the Helia Foundation inclusive, uh, inclusively, uh, well, with other the organizations as well, who will come and appear for you free of charge. Right. Having said that, it's a huge step to come even to an NGO like us. It's an even bigger step to go to the police and probably an even bigger step to have it displayed in court. Right. Uh, given the difficulties and given that the authorities may not be very favourable towards you, I recognise and understand the difficulties, but I do encourage to complain. But a bigger message than that, I think, is to the police who are probably watching this, really sensitize yourself. There are lots of organizations that are doing the necessary training, but I don't know how much of that is actually being implemented. Because sometimes you go to the police station and they would say, why are you here? Why haven't you gone to your closest police station? Why are you at the Women and Children's Bureau? Because you are the Women and Children's Bureau. It doesn't matter what jurisdiction you're from, if you're a woman or a child, you should be able to go there. But they would say, why didn't you go to your nearest police station? Why are you coming so late? What proof do you have and sometimes it takes ages for somebody to come and make a complaint and sometimes you have no proof 
right? But that doesn't mean that that complaint shouldn't be recorded, that complaint shouldn't be investigated, that complaint shouldn't be inquired into. So I think the police have a big role to play. While we need to encourage and we do continue to encourage more and more women to complain, the police need to do a better job. I think that's really my message out there to any police official who is watching this program. Timetna, what do you have to say on that? Um, <clears throat> so, I think action points, women, um, I feel like we don't have a place to go and tell our problems, right? As women, and even if there are lawyers or even if there are hierarchies, other hierarchies, we don't have places to go and tell that this is what we go through and there is no immediate action taken for women. So I think we have to implement something that will take immediate action for women. I mean, not only women, even small boys, like kids, they don't have a place and they are not confident enough to come home and tell their parents that I went through this harassment, right? So I think we need to first make sure that we talk to each other and we always be open up to someone close so that they know what you're going through because there are so many little girls who are not talking to their parents and going through a lot yeah so i mean that there's this thing now which what i've experienced is people have made this facade about feminists and activists saying that no they are just talking out they just want to express themselves and you know we shouldn't take this we are not doing anything like that you know like I have had people, you know, just doing it for the sake of doing. They don't have a purpose in doing. So authentic feminists are very hard to find right now, I feel. You know, people just do it for the sake of doing, you know, without any purpose. What can you say for that? What message can you give out for the women out there who claims themselves to be feminists or activists to do an authentic job and actually fight for women's rights? Yeah, it's not always about like talking out loud about exactly. women's rights and you know, uh, blaming. People often think that feminists are often like anti men kind of thing. Yes, it's, that's it's right. not that. It's not that we hate men or anything like that. Feminists, in my opinion, should be for all genders, not just females. So um, I think feminism uh, should be sort of. Uh, get, uh, they should get a new meaning as in feminism itself should get a new meaning it has sort of lost its meaning down the line and it's it's not only about you know to talking about your rights talking about you know what's wrong in the society but you have to really see what's wrong act on it and you know live up to your word right uh, because I have uh, yeah. heard like even boys and men, even if you stand next to a girl, they tell, oh my God, she'll go and complain against me. I am scared to even stand next to her. That's the image that it has been created amongst feminism. Like, how can we change that? Because uh, on social media, we see a lot of women uh, speaking out and talking loud. But then, you know, people don't take them seriously. Why? Because they don't do it with a genuine purpose, you know. So what can you tell them? I think we have to first start making sure what feminism is yes. you know maybe we have to dig deeper before we come into a platform to do feminism or talk about it so i think in my point of view someone who wants to talk about feminism should dig deeper than what they say because influencers in sri lanka really influence people <laughs> <laughs> that's right especially through social media you know now throughout the years now feminism was there uh, from a really long time how has it evolved over the years we are reaching the end of our program as well and now i want to talk about the current context about feminism and activism uh, how has it changed throughout do you feel that there has been a change in our culture and the way people look at things yeah, I think there has definitely been at least a slight change. I don't want to say it's been a drastic change. I don't think it's a good enough change. I think there's a lot that can be changed. But yes, I do think the simple answer to your question is that yes, because I feel that maybe the four of us are more empowered than our own mothers were, right? And we see that from generation to generation. So that, I think, is a very positive plus point. Having said that, four of us may not be the demographic of this country. We may not be the norm of what a Sri Lankan woman is, right? So are they empowered? 
have they been empowered by their parents or their peers and i think feminism very simply is just asking for equal opportunity right we are asking for our place same equally to men right and honestly was something that i always say is that we can do anything that a man can do while bleeding like that's really <laughs> my thing right yeah. so it's just about asking for equal opportunity i think people have misplaced the understanding of feminism and i think honestly people just got to read up on it because feminism hasn't changed the meaning of it hasn't changed what we are asking for hasn't changed different people have given it a meaning that is not the correct meaning and i think that's what needs to change tarangi what do you think sorry timatma uh i think um, just like i do agree with tarangi and um, people have different opinions right so that opinion we have to uh, take in take it in good and bad ways right because so from shinali to tarangi you all have different opinions me sayam we have different opinions but this is uh, us talking in one platform right so we are coming into one phase one ground and we are going to talk about feminism so basically about feminism people need to understand what feminism is it's not about just like sayam said anti men <laughs> that's not like that and we all we need men in life right we do need men in life and i mean there is this quote you know every successful uh, man has a woman behind Woman-made, yeah just like that i think every successful lady needs a man like a supportive man a arm behind well said, her right well even if it's for like a father or a brother or a husband or a life partner or someone else maybe so i think that's what i have to say it's not always being anti men it's never anti men we need men in life mm-hmm. and we just need, need them to be supportive that of our we goals just and need them help to, us be independent yes and understand what we are going through and what we need to you know put out than suppress Okay that was actually well said we do need men in life it's not that we are against men in any way it's yeah. just that we need a little bit of support you know we support you all why can't you support us you know we also want to strive just like you all so likewise so i think we are reaching the end of our program as well to end up uh, in up our discussion i want you all to give a message to the women out there and also everyone else not just the women to respect each other and how can we empower each other in these modern times because times are becoming really difficult especially in sri lanka with culture with politics with economics everywhere people are facing some sort of struggle and especially if we are not there for each other it's very difficult to live life so to end off i want you all to give a positive message to all our viewers who are watching this so my message would be just don't limit the concept of feminism or women's rights to just colombo and the urban areas take it out there educate uh those who really need to be educated not just us in colombo we talk about these things very often and we are quite known for these things and we we know about these things but uh the people out there there are a majority of the country who actually don't know about these things and the rights that they have to come out and speak up for themselves so i think that uh that should be uplifted that that area should be empowered and and uh, don't ever feel um um like it's um not right to empower another person like you can always help another person you can help your friend and um always uh take it as a good thing uh yeah that's my message yes and also i think it doesn't cost you a penny to be supportive so i want all of you to be supportive to each other not only women but also men so equal you know equality being equality to all of the genders no gender bias that's my message yes tarangi yeah, i think my message very shortly is just go for it like break the glass ceilings honestly we can do anything and everything and i feel like if every girl is empowered with that thought in mind we could just reach so many great heights so keep empowering keep educating and i'm so glad that we're doing this awareness much needed awareness um and hopefully we can see some change fingers crossed 
Well, and that was our episode. And thank you so much for the messages that you all put across, especially on International Women's Day itself. I'm so glad that I had this conversation with you all as well. And so thank you, Tarangi Muthukumara, who is the director of Yehliya Foundation, Timet Malgama, the secretary of New Generation Chapter, and also Sayumi Jayawardena, the Global Outreach uh, Avenue Chair in NGSL. Thank you again, you girls, for sharing your insights on this. Thank, thank you, you so you much thank you so for having much. us. And that was our episode on Gen XYZ on this International Women's Day and it's a day where we celebrate not just women but everyone in general I feel because I don't think we should restrict ourselves in celebrating women just on Women's Day. So I wish you all also all the very best and have a very happy Women's Day and we will be back again next week with another problem or issue that relates to the youth or a topic per se and just in case you can watch us on air you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel. YouTube youtube.com slash other there in English and special thanks to also Cafe Ivy who has been partnering with us for Gen XYZ as well. I'm Susan Shenadi, stay safe and have a good night.